It is with great pleasure and really it's an honor and a privilege to have these two wonderful people, wonderful musicians in the studio today. My name is Nicole Garcia and this is our interview with John Diversa, Grammy Award winning arranger, composer, artist, educator. He's also the chair and professor of the UM Frost School of Music. And we also have with us here today, Tal Cohen, Israeli-Australian, award-winning, world-renowned pianist. Um, you also did the Barry Harris Competition and um, the Friedman Fellowship Sydney at the Sydney Opera House. So welcome. It's Thank you. great to have you here. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how did the two of you meet? So before I even... Before we get into it, um, The Art of Duo, right? That's your latest record. Um, it's going to come out maybe next year. Do we know when it's going to? Yeah, we have a date set. It's February 3rd. February 3rd. 2023. 2023. Mm -hmm. Yeah, The Art of the Duo, Volume 1, because we uh, fully intend to continue this project and as long as we both are standing or sitting, uh, whichever may be more appropriate, uh, because we feel very strongly about the, the deepening of the music and the connection and the, uh, the musical collaboration. That's wonderful. So how did the two of you meet? So back to that question. Well, I think I, I, the day I, I came here um, from Australia, eight, nine years ago now, was this the first day that John joined the faculty. So we, we actually started, um, you know, the, the University of Miami journey on the same day, mm -hmm. you know. And actually for me, I saw John the first day I actually got to Miami, you know. So for me, John's been here the whole time, you know. Regardless of the university. No, but you know what you should share, what you shared with me about Adam <laughs> Benjamin? Because you yeah, saw Adam before right. that, right? So when I was in, in, in Australia, um, I was getting ready to to leave. It's my baby, maybe even a year ago. I was still considering my options. And um, a great pianist um, that, you know, really the founding member, one of the founding members of Kneebody, and a good friend of mine and just an incredible musical mind, he came down to, to Australia to pair off with Nibody. And his name's Adam Benjamin. And I asked him, I said, Adam, where do you think I should go? What's going on? And I said, I'm concealing Miami. And he goes, yeah, there's a guy there. He has similar hairs to you. And he kind of has like a vibe. I think you guys are really going to get along really well. You should go to Miami. He said that to me. And he, you know, he was like... John DeVelsa is a really cool guy. I think you guys are going to get along. And here we are with this, out of the duo. <laughs> so Here we are. Adam Benjamin, you were right. So. This, by the way, is the what Tal is holding up. Is I, I, we just got in the mail the, the, the test pressing of the, the vinyl that will come out in February. So we're going to try it out, see how it sounds. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you haven't listened to it yet. But you will. I listen to it. It sounds good. Oh, okay, so awesome. I haven't awesome. listened to it yet. So mm -hmm. great. This is the joyous occasion today of uh, the first the first listen for me. So yeah, we're really proud of this. We decided to do vinyl, and uh, here it is. And so, how did you two first begin collaborating together and coming up with the idea for the art of duo? Well, you know, we, we were starting to play with each other already. You know, Tal was playing in, in my bands here in Miami, uh, the small band, and I had a couple a couple of big band things that I put together, and Tal played in that. And Tal has a, a trio and a quartet, and so I guested. It became a quartet when I would come and, and guest with him here in, in Miami. And uh, and then we played, I mean, we played, I, I brought you to, to China uh, and a couple other gigs along the way and so I just love the you know tall plays with such uh, openness and and it's, it's openness of heart openness of mind but he's able to tap into the moment and whatever the moment needs he's there to bring it in and 
and they're you know every once in a while you you meet people that can match you at a certain frequency and uh, and tall does that and so you know i don't really remember the whole evolution of how this particular project came up but it became clear to me at a certain point that there's a connection here that needs to be explored and uh, a capacity that can be deepened and deepened and deepened uh, uh, an exploration to to express for ourselves and also i think that the depth that we're able to communicate musically uh, transfers to the audience in a very special way too because it's just it's so honest and it's so uh, pure and authentic and and we can turn on a dime because nothing's preconceived and so that's something that I wanted to explore more and more so we talked about it at a certain point so we need to do a record <laughs> uh, and and then it became you know I think we we started to play a little bit duo uh, just uh, experimenting with it, booked a couple gigs, and started to see what that was going to be like, and and then it then it became okay. We're going to do this for real, and we it, it's never real right until you book the time in the studio, <laughs> you know. And once I said, "Tall, okay, I, <laughs> I booked the times. We're free to you know we're both free on those days. It's going to happen, so we're going to do it, and then it's real. Uh, so it's just a you know we're we're just at the very beginning of the journey. Mm. It's really wonderful that you two were so in sync and on the same page when it came to, okay, you know what, we're going to make an album. Because I think as, music, as, as a musician, you know, sometimes you might want to make a record, but then you kind of have to ask and, okay, who do I, who's the personnel? Who do I want to mm -hmm. play with? But it seems like for you two, it just happened very naturally. Yeah, I d this whole process of how it happened just just seems like like it was totally right, you know. There was like mm -hmm. nothing. I said, you know, even the way we recorded it, like you're saying, it was so easy. We just booked the studio, and it's just the two of us. But that whole thing was like a time tunnel warp thing, you know. <laughs> it was just like three days in the studio, and 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 I came out, and I was like I felt recharged and energetic. Wow. Max was there. And it felt like I could do this forever, you know. It felt, you know, and I feel like th the the humor in everything and the the you know, I don't know. It just feels like a really natural thing to do. I mean, even when we were just um, we just did a tour in LA, and every time we do a gig, whoever's there, you can just feel that they're connected. We played in uh, Iowa, and it was outside. And even though it was like a, you know, um, let's say call it a less intimate venue because it was it was right. outside and it was hot, the crowd is still there, connect, you know, connects to it. And, and I think that really this is one of the projects that really, to me, is what it's all about, you know. This is really why I started playing music. These things, this, the core of it, the, the, the deepness of it and the... What it makes me feel after, like I, I, you know, every gig is like I feel like I achieved, like this inner kind of, um, mm. it, it, to an extent, it's even inner peace with myself because it's like this is what I do this for. It like gives me purpose, you know, and and really, you know, John kind of signifies to me what what this all this all things about, you know. Um, you know, it, it's it's beyond the the kind of like musical um, uh, capability. You know, is right. is is you know we always talk about the moment and what the moment needs, and 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 John has this way that is like always in the moment, even in life. You know, it's like seems to be like especially especially <laughs> right. you know here we are like you know you know talking about you know, a juice that we had yesterday, you know, and he's like, I wish I was there now. You know, like he's he's like always kind of, ex so playing music with him has that same kind of, um, you know, it's like everything kind of disappears and it's just me and him in this world and we're just like really, really like trying to like explore this world, you know, and this is what, because when it comes down to it, I mean, it's, you know, the crowd matters. Obviously, we're trying to hit someone, you know, 
But if we're not going to connect ourselves and like mean something to us, there's no way it's going to mean something to anyone else, you know? So when it means something to us and we're so much in this world, then we kind of open our eyes and we're like, wow. And then the crowd is, you know, like, wow, you know, right. take him to a place that, that that's ours, you know? Mm. And as someone who's listened to the record, I love it. I love it. I host a radio show too at WDNA and I do the programming for the Latin Jazz Quarter. So I'm always listening to new records and it's a great show. Nicole. Thank you. It really Thank is. you. And when I listened to it, because I was able to, John actually sent me, I think it was some of the rough mixes at the time. Right. And even listening to that was so much fun for me. <laughs> if I had to put a word to it, it's fun mm. it's fun it's honest it feels real and that's what i love about it that's what i love about the record and there are so many jazz duo records but i feel like this one is special Thank and you. you're very welcome so, yeah, yeah the, the the idea of i mean we always kind of talk about this is the idea of a duo record um the affiliation of a duo record is a lot of the time that it's kind of quieter or mainly yeah, slower. Yeah, that's you true. Know. It's, um, you know, that's not to say that it's always been done like that, but it's kind of a, a you know, um, a, a, a stigma or something, an affiliation or something. And we didn't consciously try to break that, but John sings on the album, he plays EVI. I'm so glad you brought that up. You know, he, he has yeah. all these kind of things, so it's kind of like there's so many moods <laughs> on this mm. thing, you know, and they all take you to a place that Tal Cohen and John DeVersa created, you know, and, and to use uh, John's word is, you know, if you kind of relate to those frequencies, you I think you'll really enjoy this album, you know, and... Yeah, I think I think it'll I think it'll hit you somewhere. So it's a wide gamut, isn't it, of frequencies? You know, because I think that mm. sometimes, and and it's no judgment on on where we all are on mm -hmm. different frequencies, but I feel like this album does grab. I mean, it goes to great depths. I have to say, in terms of, I'm not talking about intellectualism, just in terms of human feeling. You know, there's there's a because of the honesty, because the vulnerability, you know, in, in the duo setting, we've talked about it so many times, there's an intimacy that <laughs> you have to go into it uh, without fear. You've got to be fearless. Everything is exposed. Yes, every breath, every little speck of spit and, and shadow and, you know, all those, all those things are, are just right there and present. Um, so we go there. And so any other human can relate to that. And but there's also fun and there's joy and there's hum there's humor and and uh, so it, it's I feel like it's a wide range of 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 feeling, you know. And it really hit me, you know, Tal. We we've talked about it before, um, you know, <laughs> over an espresso at some point. But you know, you brought up the Iowa City Jazz Festival that we did, and we did. Uh, you know, part of the show was done with my with a small band with a rhythm section, and then we broke off, which was great. And and then we broke off and did you know three or four duo things, just on our own. And the the impact I was concerned about it as kind of the 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 you know the the person's name on the bill. You know, uh, what it's a larger crowd. It's you know you're out in 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 a big park kind of setting and. When it breaks down to duo, are we going to lose interest? Especially outdoors, right? Exactly. And I felt like the opposite happened. We drew everybody in, and that intimacy really connected with even more people on a deeper level, and that's the feedback that we got back. And that's the thing that's blowing me away uh, about uh, about this music. As, as much as it draws uh, us in into that intimacy, I think it draws even more people uh, into a deeper place. Definitely. So when you were preparing for the album, what were the rehearsals like? Because being around you two, I mean, I love the dynamic because sometimes, you know what? Sometimes I feel like a third wheel because <laughs> you guys like read each other's minds. 
<laughs> and then I'm just observing, which is wonderful. So how to, does you that tell you what towel snicking right now? <laughs> Go okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're gonna take a pause. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is tall thinking right now? Okay, it, it goes a little something like this. Espresso. Espresso. Nailed it. <laughs> 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 nailed it totally nailed it um okay. the rehearsals um for me it was it was a really it was just it was just a really joyous kind of thing i mean it was it was just a really good time in my life i just had so much good time you know i was looking forward to this time when i kind of walk into the office towards the end max was there too and it just felt like you know it, just purpose like here we are doing this and I specifically remember you know this we always talk about this this uh the ramen incident we call it you know when it was raining and we we're both hungry and I just got to school and I said John are you hungry I'm gonna get something to eat and I went to uh UM the cafeteria there and they had like a ram ramen machine and I got this ramen it wasn't good no. And, and it was like a, a, what do you call those machines? Like a vending machine. A vending machine ramen, yeah. And, um, no, novel. It's glue. I appreciate the ramen, yeah. <laughs> but this was some pretty nasty stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, John said that the noodles were made out of plastic, you know. So we go there and we kind of, had, you know, we ate this ramen and we were like, Wow, we, we kind of went for something together, you know, and we played some music and we'll never forget it, you know. Did you have some too? No, no, you the didn't. The time, the plastic. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, <laughs> that whole month, yeah, exactly, that whole month of like being there and coming in and thinking about it. And John used to send me voice mess, like voicemails of him singing a tune and it was like, this is the next tune, you know. It's, all these kind of things. We were just so immersed in this, you know? Mm, so the repertoire, how did how did you guys pick that? How did you choose? We started off, you know, connecting on a few standards at first, and then um, very quickly, you know, John bought in a tune and was like, hey, try this, and kind of, you know. Again, it was a really natural thing, and then I, I wrote a tune specifically for it, and arrangements and everything. It was a very natural process. Um, we definitely thought about instrumentation, what what you know John can play on the VI and what how you know and what he can sing on things like that and the singing. Think, so. Can you mm. tell us about that? <laughs> Please do. You're singing on two songs <laughs> on the record, correct? Mm -hmm. Me or tall? You. Oh me. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I I've been wanting to to bring that in for a long time, and it was just time to do it, and and. You know, Tall is able to, to create a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, reminds me of Baloo the Bear in Jungle the Book. Jungle the Book. Jungle, <laughs> the Jungle Book. Mm. Where he hears the beat and then he can't think about anything else. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's something I've been wanting to do. And, you know, I started off as a, as a singer, you know, when I was a little kid. You know, the first, my first experiences with music was singing. And I learned how to read music singing, mm. you know, in church. And, you, you know, you read the four part. Yeah. Uh, uh, harmonies and and then somewhere you know when I started playing trumpet then that kind of took over and um, and all of a sudden it wasn't as cool to to sing and and I just got more immersed in real improvisational music and instrumental music and and so it's just time to bring it back and so I don't know you know I'm, I'm an untrained singer but I'm I'm really enjoying that expression and I remember you know I, I did my master's at uh, Cal Arts, California Institute of the Arts in Valencia, California, and I, for one of my recitals, I sang and played the bass. I didn't even play the trumpet for that recital, and you know, I really, I really, I, and the experience that I had was being so vulnerable when you're singing lyrics, and especially lyrics that you've written, and of course it can be interpreted a thousand different ways, but when you say something's blue, then somebody has a certain connotation of what that hue of blue is, and it's not like hiding behind, we, you know, that's a little bit more abstract on, on, uh, 
just being instrumental. So, you know, there's, there's a certain experiment of being experiment of being fearless that I wanted to start to adventure inside. And Tal created that uh, safe space. I mean, every time I'd say, hey, you know, what about this? If I had any insecurity about it, I mean, he just said, yeah, let's do it. Let's just do it. There's no, no you judgment about it. You had insecurities? Absolutely. What? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, teasing you. The John DeVersa. I know. I know. <laughs> the John DeVersa, the human being. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, our, our, our rehearsal process, it was important to me that we got together, you know, as much as we could, because it's not just about developing the repertoire and the arrangements and the compositions. It was, it was about the connection itself. You know, you can't, you can't fake just going in oh, uh, and not having spent the time. Maybe that happens too much these days. Perhaps. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, love that you say that. That's true, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and we needed to go through the arrangement process together because we would go through the tunes and and for me to you know every project i've ever done has been like some huge manifesto with 153 different people involved and you know schedules and and all of a sudden it's just two of us and so i could kind of sit back a little bit more and not be the master planner and we could do everything you know collaboratively and and 50 50 and we could go through these arrangements as co-collaborators and i could take all of his ideas and go okay yeah uh, absolutely and he would take my ideas and absolutely it was always yes and yes and yes and mm. um and that contributes to the way that we're able to play together too it all goes in you know and of course <laughs> when we were thinking about repertoire just thinking about your question you know i i, I sent tall i don't know like 20 25 tunes of mine that said yay we could do this and you know, a lot of them I, i'd recorded before i said no let's let's do only things that you've never recorded before okay done and and a couple of uh I so too. you know and, and i and i had you know and i kind of kind of dropped in these these vocal tunes and said hey what about this you know you think and he's like yeah let's do it yeah and uh you know and so we created that space for each other how long did that that process take i'm just like a few months or it was like two three, three months two months i mean there was a lot of playing going on some gigs and things like that mm-hmm. um we did a jazz forum and and we did in um, other things. Cor- corona was going on at the time. Uh, mm. It was probably about three months, like of playing together, but yeah, but I, very um, consistently. Yeah, it was right. pretty consistent. Um, I just want to say that, that I remember specifically about the singing. Recently, we did a master class and we played the album to um, um, to some students there, and they were like really excited and they loved it. They just wanted to hear more, and then we played. Um, you know, uh, Spider, and um, it's one of the comments was from a student. Do you remember John? What he said? He mm. said it sounds like one person playing. Mm. He said wow. it sounds like a person singing, mm. standing on the piano playing. I do remember that. And he was like, it was such a strong comment because it was like, it blew my mind because I was like. He, he he was like it's so fine tuned and so in, inter interlocked or something that it sounds like just a, a stream of consciousness of one person kind of thing you know and it was it was really like well we achieved something here, you know you know so back to you know the process of doing this you know to an extent that was like a, the goal a l- little bit you know I mean not to sound like one one person obviously but like to have that kind of synchronicity, is that the word? Mm-hmm. The that synchronicities, yeah. Synchronicity, yeah. And and to hear that, you know. And and that's kind of what the process is about, that three months playing together, you know, just getting to know each other, eating some bad ramen together, you know, all those <laughs> kind like of things. I like that story. Yeah. <laughs> there, I mean, there was one rehearsal in, in quotes <laughs> where, uh, you know, Tal came over and we were going to play and what do we, we talked for We like talked for like an hour and a half, half yeah. yeah. I don't know what we talked about, but that was the rehearsal, and that was what was coffee, needed. mad ramen, mm-hmm. those kind of things. Yeah. No, yeah, you know, exactly. The, the yeah. connection happens on all the different levels, you know, not just playing. Yeah, yeah. That's a good reminder. 
think for everyone. It is a really good amount. But I mean, the nature of making an album today, a lot of the time, is, hey, can you do this date? There'll be a rehearsal before, you know. Right. Because it's expensive to do and everyone's traveling. Right. You know, everyone's trying to make a living and whatever, you know, just to be real. It's uh, always like, hey, here's the date. Here's your flight, maybe, you know. Or, um, hey, I want to do a record. I'll get this guy from here, you know. Um, but the idea of, like, actually, like, creating something deeper than that and communicating and, and actually like walking towards something um n- n- not to say it doesn't happen but but this experience is definitely that you know so that's very special it was it was a really joyous time i'm trying to find that <laughs> oh you will <laughs> you said it here august 6th 2022 you'll find it <laughs> thank you mm-hmm waiting for you you will have a bad ramen experience don't worry mm. that's exactly what i meant yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh one mm. more thing um the tune the composition the art of sanity mm-hmm. can you tell us how you wrote that one well i was i was you know john was writing um some tunes for the album and john being you know the mastermind you know I really think uh, you know, just to touch, you know, he's he's done a lot of things in his career that a lot of people um, haven't. In from the perspective, that he's got a big band, he's got a small band. He is a hell, you know. It's just kind of like he's the complete package of a lot of things, you know. Um, and I feel like I feel like this this kind of thing, like playing with him right now, and really him getting into like you know trumpet and singing and EVI. I feel like it draws something from him that people kind of haven't heard before. Mm. And, and, you know, dare I, I say, agree. Uh, dare I say, like, I see him like kind of closing his eyes and like, you know, and there's only a few people in the world. Actually, there's t- right now I can think of two, maybe three that I've played with. And I've played with a lot of people that have the capability and like, He's got elephant ears, you know. He he hears everything. I can change a chord, and it's just there. Nothing, nothing kind of stamp him, and 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 it's kind of like this. Sometimes I'm like, well, you know, will this stamp him? You know, like you know. <laughs> and this is the 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 uh, the, the light sparring, you know. And I can't. I haven't stamped him yet. It's coming, but you know, <laughs> you know. It's like, can you, you know? And it's just there's he's so capable. He's he's naturally so talented, you know. Um, so it's it's really cool to, you know. But back to the out of sanity, um, the tune. I kind of sat on the piano and John was writing the tune. And I said, "What do I really want to say?" And I and I came in with this tune, and John said, "You know what? Tal, this sounds really like you." I remember I said that, and I said, and then John was like, "Can we change this section to free and let's vamp on this and you know and kind of like put his you know um, twist on it and came up with this tune that." Means means something to me um, because I wrote it when a lot of things was going were going in my head, like a lot of things were spinning around in my head. And I talked to John about the name, and, and he said, "What's going on in your life?" And I said, "I feel like when I'm writing this soon, it's kind of like a, a sanctuary, mm. and you know, and and also like the process of creating this album was like a sanctuary, you know, like block the noise out, close the door, and play, and and it, it meant a lot to me." And, that's why I called it you in the art of sanity, you know. You gotta do these things to stay <laughs> sane, you know. It's like it's an art to stay sane these days, you know. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but no, it's not. You know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, it's not. It's not an exaggeration. So. You gotta know the phone number. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the record will be released February third. Two three. Uh, uh, chica, 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 2023. <laughs> 2023. I'm very excited. I'm so excited because I know people are going are going to love it. I just know people are going to love it. People, um, especially if they can see you two play together live. I think and I think that's something special about this record that I'm a huge fan of live records. I love live records. 
I just, that's what I listen to most of the time. And there's something really cool about this record that gives me that feeling. Mm. You know, I know that you guys recorded it in a studio and it's not a live record, but it gives me that feeling. And it's something that you can even hear through the headphones. You feel like you're there. And to me, that's something very important in music that I can feel like it's real. I feel like I'm there. And so I just hope that whoever is listening, that they have a chance to listen to the record, that they have a chance to listen to you to play live. And I'd like to close out with one more question because we got to hear what Tall is thinking right now. What is John thinking <laughs> right now? <laughs> What's John thinking right now? Mm. <laughs> I think he's probably thinking about espresso also. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you did bring me a machine. Yeah, today. I know. I know. Literally, yeah. that happened today. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm there, looking yeah. at it right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Might, uh, might have to do the juice, though, first. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's juice. what he's thinking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's thinking about the juice. Celery That's juice, awesome. celery, apple, and mm -hmm. cucumber. That was kind of rock in my world yesterday. That was, oh, yesterday? That was, was that? Oh, no. Two days ago. Two and days, those three two days ago. Well, it rocked my world, the thought of it yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> even though I couldn't enjoy it yesterday. There are mm. a lot of thoughts that are rocking my world right now that, that didn't happen yesterday, but I can just go there. I can just dial the phone number and be there. Give us one. Oh, well, there was this one time when I was uh, in the woods, and there's this little bird, this little robin that was like, I forget the call of the robin. You know the call of the robin? I don't. Mm. I'm gonna have to look that Is up. Is the robin the red one? Yeah, it's got the red breasted and and small like little, little cute little, little uh, little birdie. And I was there, and then these people started coming into my brain, and they were like, "John, just continue on with the mission." And uh, and so I'm there right now. <laughs> I need some of that. <laughs> So cool. All you have to do is dial in 847. You'll be right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. 847. 847. Yeah. And if you add all the numbers with the numerology, then you'll, of course, you get the number of the sun. Which is? Energizing. 19, I believe. 19. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. My number is 16. Yes. <laughs> yes, I know. I know why. And you're a butterfly, which is beautiful. That too. Mm hmm. We're just speaking truth right now. Mm. <laughs> it's fun. It's it's all available at at every moment. And and that's what we try and do when we play. It's just tap into whatever whatever comes down. Yeah. So thank you so much for thank taking you. the time thank to you. speak with us and and help us uh you know, transfer part of our mission and uh and bring people in that want to align with what we're doing. It's an honor and a privilege. So thank you so much thank for you, being Nicole. here today. Take care. <laughs>